Hello, everybody, and welcome into Senior Living Live. My name is Melissa. Thank you so much for being a part of our show today. Now, the Arbor Company and Sage Stone Partners, you hear a lot about them, are in the process of building a brand new community in East Memphis, Tennessee called Opus East Memphis. This luxurious senior living community is scheduled to open in early 2023, and we thought it would be a pretty good idea to introduce you some of our future residents, we hope, to some of the wonderful offerings nearby. Kevin Sharp of Dixon Gallery and Gardens in Memphis is with me today to dive into the visual arts and explain how it can help uh, no matter where you happen to be in your senior living journey. Kevin, thank you so much for being with us today. Well, Melissa, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah, I love this topic so much. And, and, you know, there's a lot of scientific data to back up, you know, the arts, uh, visual arts, uh, seniors in general, those who need a little bit of help with memory care. We're going to dive into all that. But first, before we do that, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background and Dixon Gallery and Gardens there in Memphis. Sure. Well, we are we literally share a fence with Opus East. And so we are very much next door neighbors. I am the, the executive director of the Dixon Gallery and Gardens. It's a position I've held for 15 years. Um, before that, I was largely a curator. I started my, my museum journey at the Art Institute of Chicago in 1988. I, had, um, I went to the Norton Museum of Art, West Palm Beach, Florida, where I was um, curator of American art for a number of years. And lastly, I was at a small museum in downstate Illinois called Cedarhurst, where I was director of visual arts. And so I am, excuse me, I am now, I am now, um, should have put it on do not disturb well before now, but, um, and so I'm now the, the director of the Dixon in, in, in beautiful Memphis, Tennessee, and just really loving it. Yeah, so this is a good time now to use your words to really help give us a picture uh, of, of this Dixon Gallery and Gardens. What can our future residents expect when they visit? Well, we're a very special place. We are a museum of fine art. We have a world-class collection. That's the, the real strength of the collection is in French Impressionism, but we're really a museum of, of modern art in the, in the purest sense of the word, it, meaning that that we're looking at, at European and American art from about 1850 to 1950 in this crucial modernist window. And we have outstanding examples by, um, by such notable artists as Edgar Degas, Mary Cassatt, Claude Monet, Pierre Auguste Renoir. I mean, just sort of the name brands of Impressionism, but our collection moves into the 20th century and we have wonderful examples by Matisse, and by Marc Chagall and, um, and many others. So we, are, we have a world-class collection, but we don't depend solely on that. We are constantly cycling exhibitions through the, uh, through the museum. So there's always something new to see and do at the, at the Dixon. So um, the special exhibitions turn in our galleries about four times a year, almost always four times a year. And that matches the seasons which, um, which has a great deal more relevance for our beautiful, beautiful 17 acres of gardens um, where, you know, it's, it's very much a four season garden and where there, things are always changing there as well as we move from spring to summer to fall to winter. Yeah, so uh, there's a lot there. You did, you did a good job. <laughs> you did a really good job. I, I was getting excited just hearing that description. Um, I look forward to showing it to you. Yeah, and you guys uh, have more than just that, right? So we're really talking today about the visual arts, but also the things that our, our potential residents can do and participate in. So, you know, many of our Arbor communities, uh, we try to engage our residents with many different types of activities, music therapy to art, as we're talking about here. That is your specialty, obviously. Mm -hmm. So tell us about some of the programs that you offer for seniors and guests who come to visit. Yeah, we have a very, very dynamic education program at the Dixon, and it's really been a, a catalyst for building community here in here in Memphis. And um, and so we have we have tons of programs for um, for I mean, we really do educate for the life cycle and they're and they're in the gardens as well as on the art side. But we do things like tours at two 
every, every Sunday afternoon at two o'clock. We do Munch and Learn every Wednesday at noon, where we do 50, 50 Munch and Learns every year, where somebody from the community will come in and share something interesting. I try to do a Munch and Learn about four times a year myself, just to keep my, just to keep my hand in. But we also have things like yoga. We have a Dixon Book Club. We have Senior Studio. We did a, in Senior Studio, we did a, a multi-day watercolor workshop in April. And in June, we're doing a pottery workshop. And then we have things like Hobby Kickstart, where we introduce people, give people an opportunity to see if, if a certain hobby is right for them. Yeah. And then, of course, basic museum and garden fair, things like lectures, tours, and then we do a great deal with outreach where we actually go to come to you um, and share programs if that's more convenient or more accessible for um, for your residents. So um, it's it's a very dynamic program at any given at any given um, time. There are roughly 30 standing education programs at in the in the gardens and the galleries, and that also includes um, we also do a lot of special events. So just last um, Sunday on Mother's Day, we had Symphony in the Gardens where the Memphis Symphony Orchestra performed on our South Lawn. We um, have a virtual wine down, um, a wine tasting program called Wine Down at the Dixon. And that went virtual during the pandemic, but it was so much better in its way as a virtual program um, that we, we kind of left it there. And um, we just we there's just always something always something to do at the at the Dixon, and it's usually something that's kind of inspiring and enriching. And how fortunate will our residents be that you know when the music's playing, they can just lift the windows up and, and hear it. It's it's wonderful. It just it sounds dreamy. Actually, yeah. that's the best word I can think of to describe it. So let's talk about our seniors a little bit here, and how does art and aging really go hand in hand? Well. You know, I'll say this. I mean, you know, it's art is, you know, a kind of maturing process all its own. You know, the more I mean, the more you dig into the world of art. And I think this is also true of, of understanding the natural world and horticulture as well. But the more the more you the more you give to it, the more you embrace it. The more, um, the more your own knowledge and understanding and experience of works of art um, matures in a way, the more, the more enriching, the more it'll give back to you. And, um, and so when, when the, the residents of Opus East have this sort of incredibly close access to the Dixon Gallery and Gardens, even if, even if you know, art hasn't been a big part of your of your your life up to that point. You should give it a try. It's right there. The proximity is so close, and I can tell you, the more you give to it, the more it will mature as a thing of value in your in your life. And it'll inspire you. It'll enrich you. It will make you more empathetic. It will make you more understanding. It will it will open up worlds to you that you may not have known before. And that's, and that's something very, very special. So I think, you know, as, as, you know, when I was, when I was young, when I was a young curator at the Art Institute of Chicago, you know, I, of course, knew everything, but I didn't know anything. And as the years have gone by and, and I've gotten older and spent that, just that much more time learning and being open to the wonders that art can bring to my life, you know, it's been it's been an, an enormously satisfying and enriching experience. And I think we can we can create that same that same template for um, for our visitors. Yeah, it's certainly something we can all appreciate. And another thing I could appreciate is the scientific data to back up everything you just said and how important expressive art as well can be as we age no matter where people happen to be in that journey in life, whether they're seniors, they're young, but in particular today, we are talking about our seniors. Mm -hmm. So can you give our viewers um, some examples uh, that you have seen there at Dixon Gallery and Gardens where this has proven true for you? Well, yeah, it's very, I mean, that's very easy to do. I mean, it's, it, we see it every day, you know, um, 
you know, the museum audiences tend to skew a little older, you know, I mean, we see tons of children as well. So, um, you know, I mean, we, like I said, it's a museum for the entire life cycle, but, but regular visitors tend to be, tend to skew a, a little bit, a little bit older. And the example I would probably give you is one that we can all kind of relate to having just come out of this pandemic experience. When, when we got back open, you know, we had to close for um, in March of 2020 and we didn't get back open until June of 2020. So we were closed for two full months and we opened the gardens and some of the first people that, that came back were, were seniors, you know, some people who were possibly, you know, remember how little we knew in, in May and June of 2020 and um, people who were possibly the most the most vulnerable were the first to come back and they were so incredibly grateful to have to have a place to go. Now it started with just the gardens. We could open the gardens about a, about a month or maybe five weeks sooner than we opened the museum, but it was the same thing when the museum got open again. And I think that, I mean, you know, that you're absolutely right. I mean, the data shows the benefits of, of experiencing works of art and certainly being in nature and what that can do for the for health and well-being and for fitness and for any number of you know emotional issues and this mindfulness and wellness. And we focus on all of that at the Dixon and we do it in an environment that is incredibly welcoming, incredibly gracious and here for, for everybody. So yeah, I think it's, I think it's a kind, the kind of place that the residents of Opus are going to appreciate and value. And, um, and, I, it, and you know, the data actually supports the, the benefits of these experiences. Yeah, and especially for someone who may be suffering from uh, memory loss, dementia, yeah. you know, Alzheimer's, the scientific data is certainly there on that end, not just for, for the visual arts and what they're seeing, but but being able to create art. It just right. hits a different part in your brain that, that doesn't seem to be as impacted uh, by, by dementia. And we talk about that in music therapy and art therapy. It's huge when it comes to engagement in our senior living communities. And so to have this in, in their, literally in their backyard, is a huge win for these residents um, already out of the gate before they even move in. It's fantastic. It's now, very true. And, you yeah. know, we work with um, art therapists as a matter of routine in, in various programs at the Dixon. Yeah, I love that. I, I do love that so much. And, and your programs are going to be able to provide a, a lot for a lot of different people, yeah. again, wherever they happen to be in their, their life journey. Um, yeah. So if someone wants to find out a little bit more uh, about your fine art museum and the gardens in particular, how can they get in touch with you? Well, that's, I mean, that's very easy. I mean, we probably the best thing to do is to go to our website, maybe dixon.org or probably actually the best thing to do is become a member of the Dixon and we'll send you information. We'll send you invitations. You'll get our, our quarterly newsletter. It's just, a, it's just a very easy way of plugging in and knowing exactly what's going on at, at, at the Dixon at, at any given time, or just visit. It's, you know, I mean, the Dixon is very much a, a town square. It's an easy place to visit. We, we charge no admission fee. To, to visit the Dixon. And so you can, you can feel comfortable about coming here. You can feel comfortable about inviting someone to come here because you're not inviting them to, to pay to do something. You're inviting them to come see a beautiful place and to experience it for free. And for those of you, now I don't happen to be very involved on social media, but we, the Dixon is absolutely plugged into Facebook, to, to Instagram, to all that stuff. So if you do any of that, we're very easy to find there as well. And so, or just, you know, or just call us. Yeah. And I probably wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't dive a little bit deeper into one other program I think you're, you, you've got there or will be starting up and that's your with Parkinson's. Yeah, that's uh, right. That's yeah, right. Let's talk about that just a little bit. When, when will we see that? Yeah, well, we're piloting it, this program right now. We, we tend to partner with, um, with organizations across the city. So we're not just creating a program and saying, oh, please come. We're creating a program with a partnering organization who has an audience that will come. 
And so we are partnering with 901 Parkinson's Fighters, an organization here in, um, here in Memphis. And they are, we are working on an art therapy program that was conceived about 40 years ago in Australia. And we are, we are, we got permission to, um, to mimic that, that program. And so we've just started this month and and um, that program should launch sometime sometime in the fall, and it's just a way of engaging another part of the brain, um, a, the creative side of ourselves, that part that we all have, whether we want to admit it or not, um, or whether we take advantage of it or not. It's there, and it also helps with motor skills. And it's so far, it, it's gone very very. It's gotten very high marks from the people who are participating. Um, as well as their care, their caregivers, and so we. Um, that, it, it, assuming it all goes well, it should launch this fall sometime. I love it, just in time, right? Just in time right. to get going for for our residents there at Opus East Memphis. Now, and now finally, uh, what makes Sticks and Gallery and Garden special and unique? We've, we've almost had a whole conversation about it, but if you really had to do just the boilerplate information here, or something that's special to you, what would that be? Well, you know, I, I think it's really the hybrid nature of the place. You know, the fact that we are an art museum and a public garden and um, and an education um, vehicle, and that all three of these elements are equally equally important in um, our overall program. And it's just it's a very rare thing, you know. It, and um, and our programming, you know, our programming reflects. What a special place it is. And so being able to see amazing works of art in this beautiful natural setting is just very, very special. And um, and I hope that I hope that our neighbors um, across the fence at Opus feel that way too. I'm sure they will. Absolutely. It sounds wonderful. Uh, Kevin Sharp, it has been a pleasure speaking with you. This is a wonderful topic, uh, of course, and your programs, I think, are going to help so many people and, and provide joy uh, to so many people. And we hope that those people will be our future residents there at Opus East Memphis. Thank you so much for being here today. Well, thank you, Melissa. It was great talking to you. Yeah, thank you. And the name, once again, Dixon Gallery and Gardens, located in Memphis, Tennessee. For those of you watching who are interested in calling Opus East Memphis, maybe you want to call it home, uh, please feel free to contact us at 901-763-6921. We thank you so much for watching Senior Living Live. Have a great day, everybody.